How does your relationship and the way you think about underwriting risk and how do you look at the relationship with your reinsurance treaties and mm. and it's mostly treaty or is there also some facultative stuff for really large unique types of things how does that work yeah there is the marine space so the the facultative market is probably easier to deal with first up but that, that comes in and out depending on appetite so mm -hmm. what quite, quite often people buy facultative tlo reinsurance to take the top mm. sort of um top exposures off their books but that, tlo is total loss total only, only. Yeah. sorry yeah so um but that really depends on appetite from the market. Um, some people see that as a good risk. Some people say, I don't want to play because it's volatile. Mm -hmm. um, and if I get a loss again, yep. I'm never going to be able to pay it back. So that ebbs and wanes depending on people's appetite. From a treaty perspective, most underwriters in the market, most underwriters in the market buy a form of treaty, whether that's QS um, or, Credit or uh, mm -hmm. Excel or mm -hmm. both. Um, and I think the, going back to the, Ukraine event, that was an interesting one for us because previously reinsurers had treated war insurance as a, you know, a sweetener for the rest of the account, yeah. take out the attrition. Mm. And then, of course, you get this massive aggregated mm. war loss, which I think shocked people how high up some towers mm. that went um, and how little we were able to not necessarily monitor aggregations, but affect them. Yeah. So, you know, we couldn't say to people, you can't go into the Black Sea. We'll, we'll say, yeah, we might charge you some more premium, but we've allowed you to go there by, yeah. you know, by the terms of your, your contract. So, mm -hmm. so it's, um, I think the reinsurance market is getting a lot more involved in um, how we monitor our exposures. And I think they're just more aware of, of what's going on.